very neat. Yeah, it's very new. We, we really like this platform. But uh, and well, welcome, uh, welcome Desmond Lim. Uh, welcome to this Saturday's edition of uh, Asia Hustle Networks. You know, Ask Me Anything webinar. Um, very excited to have you on. Uh, for those that are online with us or maybe watching at a later time, my name is Art. I am actually one of the Asian Hustle Network moderators. Uh, good morning, Kathy. Uh, good morning, Mary. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm one of the moderators here. Uh, I'm very thankful for this opportunity to be able to uh, speak to Desmond, who is CEO of Workstream and has uh, dedicated some time aside for Asian Hustle Network. He is also a member within our network uh, to, to come in and uh, basically chat with me and with you guys on, you know, what he's been doing, what his background is, and, and some of the, the important thoughts that he puts out in the industry as CEO of Workstream. And so, you know, I don't want to steal the spotlight. You know, today we're here for Desmond. So, you know, Desmond, why don't you uh, tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah, that sounds great. Well, first of all, thank you so much for, you know, having me here today. Um, I've been very glad to be part of this, this group and have learned so much now. So, but maybe I'll just start by quickly giving a quick, a very quick, a uh, very quick overview about me. And then I will lead that into what like we are now doing. And then we can move on from that. Do you think that sounds good? That sounds great. Yeah. And then for again, uh, for those that just joined on, I know we had a few few more uh, faces uh, join on. Remember, there, we do have a chat box. Make sure you put your comments on. We would love to hear what you think. Um, you know, and we also have a question question section for you. So make sure you ask questions. Ask lots of juicy questions. You guys can upvote each other's questions. Uh, we do have someone uh, in the background uh, moderating and helping me uh, and Desmond, you know, work through these questions so that I can ask those questions to Desmond. So make sure you use the question box. Okay, guys. So Desmond, back to you. Thank you so much. Yeah. <clears throat> so just to share a bit more about me. So I found out my first business right after high school to pay for college. Both my parents, they are both, they are both actually hourly workers. My dad's a driver. My mom, she's a cleaner. They both only finished fourth grade. I'm the first to go to school and to come to the U.S. on my own. I'm from Singapore. <laughs> oh, wow. So um, I founded my first business uh, to pay for college. And when I was in this college, I founded this Thai food restaurant selling Tom Yum curry. I love Thai food, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, for like three, three to four years. It was very fun, but it was also very tough. You needed to hire, manage many people. Uh, so I was able to sell it in my final year in this college, right prior to, to like, you know, going out to work. Um, after college, I went out to join Merrill Lynch was with this actually Merrill Lynch for three years covering this actually Southeast, Southeast Asia. And then I came out to the US in 2013 to go to school. I went to actually East Coast for school. Uh, mm -hmm. when I was there, I was, I was, I was part of a fun too. It is called Dorm Room Fun. Um, then I left that to become a PM for this WeChat base in the US. I was one of their first few PMs here. Um, so it was it, it was very fun. <laughs> and then I bought to the Bay Area in 2016 for my wife. She was at this Stanford Business School. So now I am based here, right next to the school. <laughs> oh, very cool. Yeah, and been working on my current current company work stream um, mm -hmm. since late 2017. So yeah. Very cool. So so for for those that are not familiar with Workstream. And I know, you know, for us and the topic of why we're here today, how business owners can respond to COVID-19 and emerge stronger. You know, there's a strong background, uh, of course, being part being a CEO of Workstream. Can you explain to our audience um, what Workstream is? What do they do? And 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 what, who does it serve? Yeah, yeah. So Workstream is an is this end-to-end -end hiring software for this for this company's hiring hourly. Workers. We work with restaurants, cafes, supermarkets, hotels, healthcare companies, and more. So today we have about a few hundred clients from Jumper Juice, Uber, Dunkin', F1, Merit, um, and more. Um, so all of our current workflow, it is via texting. Everything, it is all built on the phone, which is very key today. So one of the key things we do now, it is called, it is called contactless hiring, being able to, you know, try to screen people through video, through texting, to be able to source, screen, and even onboard, even for this paperwork, you know, email, you know. So that is what we are now doing. Uh, our team is now about 40 over 
people, uh, mainly based here, but we also have folks based somewhere else. So yeah, that's a quick overview. So we help people to be able to save time and to be able to hire faster, which is why I think now it is a really great time to even chat about this because many folks are now trying to like, you know, re like open and to rehire. Um, so I hope to be able to share some tips on how to do it in a way that is very safe and fast. <laughs> that, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's relevant today, you know, and, uh, you know, it's important to, for, I think everyone, I, I think someone at some point in their life has started as an hourly worker. They have kind of, they start somewhere, right? Their journey starts somewhere. So I think this is very relevant for someone, whether, you know, today or tomorrow, or maybe at one point in their life in the past. So that's, that's very, very exciting. So it uh, looks like we have Kathy. She's an executive recruiter, been in the industry for 20 years. So she's been using cat. Is it cat zone? Cat, cat, it's cats one. I'm not too sure. <laughs> uh, brand move in the past. So it's, it's great. So we have somebody within the industry. So, oh, cats one. Thanks, cat. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. So, um, you know, as far as that goes, it's, I want to kind of dial back for real quick from the work stream. You said you you kind of mentioned your 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 journey. So you know, work stream is what's today, right? So can you talk a little bit about you know your inspiration, um, you know, to create work stream from your own background? I know you wrote you're a guest writer for Entrepreneur. I know you wrote a few um, you know uh, pieces for LinkedIn, and so it's it's very relevant. Can you kind of talk share a little bit about your kind of history, kind of get a little bit deeper on what inspired you to create work stream? Yeah, yeah. I mean, as I had shared. Early, I think I actually grew up in this space, right? I mean, um, I grew up in the van of my dad. So I saw him having to try to find work every morning. He needed to yeah. drive like one more hour to actually get to work. And every time he had to change shops, I would see him trying to look online in the papers, calling people. It was just a very manual flow. And then when I went out to rent my own Thai food restaurant, I needed to hire and to manage many folks too. So I was always out there trying to call people, place an ad in this, you know, you know, paper. So it was all a very manual flow. Um, I tried to look for software out there and there were some tools, but there were many tools today that is all built for people who work in this office. If you think about Slack, Zoom, Quadrant, mm -hmm. Workday, mm -hmm. they're all built not just for really big companies. They are really built for people who work in this actually office, right? But if you think about it, most workers in the world are deskless hourly folks, people who work in restaurants, people who, right. work, people who work in hotels, people who work in cafes, people who work in this, you know, healthcare. The tools are not built for them because they are always mm -hmm. on the go. So there's mm -hmm. a huge gap over there in terms of software built for this deskless hourly space. And that is the, that is our whole, you know, actually mission. We want mm -hmm. to create something that can help to fill the gap to help the people in this space, to help, to, to, to try to help this actually local businesses, hourly workers to, to be able to do better work. Mm -hmm. And we want to start from this hiring. So that, that is mm -hmm. our whole, our whole goal. And that is our whole mm -hmm. like, like mission. And mm -hmm. for me, I grew up in this space and I just saw the pain point from both ends. So. Oh, God. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know any other time that this could have been more relevant than than today, and and especially the unemployment numbers that that are being reported this week. It's it's astronomical, and so you know, being that you know we are in you know our current events of COVID nineteen, what what are some like what are some like trends that you're seeing right now with hourly workers? Like what what are you hearing back from business owners? Like I, I'm sure. Yeah. Where our participants and, and audience would be curious to hear because we we have you know small business owners and of I mean, business owners in general. Yeah, you know, we do we do hire hourly workers. We do contract out. What are some things that you're saying? Yeah, I I see quite a few trends. Right, first of all, like many, I I would say that trends change very fast over the past the past few weeks and months. I would say in about late March, early April, or even for most of April, many restaurants, cafes, they have now stopped like, you know, hiring. Mm -hmm. uh, but many other spaces like, you know, you know, supermarkets, healthcare, they were, they were still trying to hire more. Um, I think for, for maybe for, for, for that three to four weeks, you know, late March and this early April, we saw a jump in almost three X to four X in terms of job postings for drivers, nurses and more. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but it, in the past two weeks, we see the trend has changed. 
right? Many people are trying to now prepare to reopen and to actually re, re like hire. Um, and that trend is now moving very fast because we all know that things, um, this will be the new norm, right? We all still have to open. We all still have to hire, right? And in, in this today's climate, it will take time to, to try to screen people, to find people and to actually train them. So we mm -hmm. see a, a pretty strong growth in the past few days and weeks of, you know, restaurant, cafes, um, hotels and more trying to re, re like open and re prep. So that is a very strong trend that we see. And they are trying to ask us, how do you uh, safely screen people in a way that's fast? How do you do this? Do this actually contactless hiring? Uh, one other trend that we see too is like many people who have got a loan from this PPP, right? They are now very keen to um, try to bring on more people because they really have to use that loan to try to grow more too. So we do see quite a few trends over there. So I would say that the trends have changed very quickly over the past six to seven weeks. But I would say that the past one to two weeks, we see many of this actually forward thinking owners. Um, they are trying to prep forward for the next one to one to one to one one to two months and i think one one other very big trend that i see too is that there's more people trying to find work uh, but from the point of view of this business owners it is still very hard to find people who are who are who are who are a fit right because you are trying to think about the job scope culture where you are based at training can you trust someone because trust is very key now if you come yeah. to someone who who don't wear masks and who is just silly, um, yeah. your whole business can close down in just a few hours, <laughs> right? So, so I, yeah, so I feel like this is something that many owners are trying to come to me. How can we safely reopen? How can we train people going guidelines? How can we better screen people, filter them, and find folks who are, who are, who are, who are a fit, so... That's, I mean, it's 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 important. I'm glad you, you point that out. It, it just it's a very business owners are, have, are more even more sensitive now, right? Every every decision that they make is is just as crucial. Your margin of error is slimmer now, and so like it, because there are uh, supposedly 14 plus million you know people in unemployment, and I think the number is, is higher now as they reported. Yeah. What, what else, uh, what's like the number one tip that you could give to business owners today outside of trust? Um, because there's a lot of people that they have to screen, you know, and through Workstream, like how, how can we, how could that platform help, you know, uh, uh, work, you know, get through that process faster? Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 I would like to try to advocate for this, for this contactless sourcing, screening and trying to onboard. Right, the very top thing that I hear from many of my owners is they don't want to let people who they don't know just strangers into their space, whether it be to screen them, to talk to them, or even to sign to 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 try to to try to find this paperwork. So I think with actually today's software, whether it is with our software or with like someone else, I think it's very key to try to practice contactless hiring. Um, mm. When you think about sourcing you can now post everything online right we uh for us we have something called it is called text to apply where people can text from their phone or even try to scan a code and then try to get mm -hmm. to try for a job in terms of this screening you can do things like video it is not just like zoom or maybe i'm um, trying yeah. to try to talk to people it is not just through the phone call you can get people to actually upload short 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 clips of themselves talking oh, okay yeah can you upload like a short 30 seconds video about why you think you are a fit for this job <laughs> almost like a virtual elevator speech yeah yeah and then you can also create quizzes and tests or you can upload videos of you talking and trying to say hey do you think you should wear masks do you think you should do this what what we do if like someone cough so you can structure a lot of these questions through quizzes where you can test them online first and there's so much things that you all can see from there, how fast they actually get back, how fast they actually answer things, right? How do they answer this, like, you know, questions? And when you choose to hire someone, you can, in terms of trying to onboard them, there's so much you can do too. W4, I9, 10, 10, 10, 10, 99, back on tracks. All those can all now be done online. 
and even mm -hmm. through our software, you can do it through the phone where you 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 can sign with your finger, right? So mm -hmm. there's no more face-to-face -face paperwork. Finally, for this training, which I think is a really big part, which I think today it is more key than ever, uh, business owners should spend time in this like training, even spend up to like two to three whole days to properly train people. Uh, mm -hmm. And trying to create content to tell them like what you what you what you should do, where you should show up at work and when, right? Because if you're having shift, like like what gear should you wear, right? So I think this right. four pillars is very key: sourcing, screening, on board, and this training. So makes sense. Well, I I appreciate the you know the explanation, and um, you know I think it would be a perfect time to to kind of transition over to some questions. Um, and on, also before I do that, you know, Brian commented that it's basically modernizing the job search, you know, and, and, and uh, what, what an incredible situation that we are in, um, however you look at it. But yeah, let's, I want to go ahead and jump into a question real quick, uh, if you don't mind, Desmond. Yeah. And, and our, our audience, go ahead, punch in some questions, make sure to upvote uh, so, so, so it, it, it surfaces so I, I can ask that question that you really want to want to hear from Desmond about. So I'll go, I'll go for one for Kathy. Um, she, she asked earlier, is, that, is the, is WorkStream more client as in the company or applicant centric or both? Who That's a great, yeah. Thank you so much uh, for like, yeah. you know, asking that Kathy. So uh, it is both. So, uh, so, I'll, so we actually work with both, but we typically sell to the owner. Right. Um, so what we do is uh, the, Business owners and the person who runs HR, they would they would actually use use our software to try to set up the whole flow in terms of sourcing, screening, and you know trying to onboard. But this helps very much people who is trying to apply for a job because in the past, someone trying for a job they may have to call in, walk in, paper forms. But through our software, everything is via texting, via the phone, and via web. So it is very quick for someone to easily like try for a job from their phone so from from our point of view we are actually able to do both well so yeah very cool very cool um and then there is a follow-up question from kathy as well uh, and i'll follow up with the one from anthony so if kathy also followed with saying is workstream trending hiring and seeing an influx of applicants what does the trend of the market look like right now she stated that most of her clients have unfortunately placed hiring freezes yeah so as i as i say right i think for from late march to late april yes i think there was a lot of freezes throughout every single sectors even though some like healthcare supermarkets still those were still strong even even stronger <laughs> right <laughs> but I, I would say that in the past one two weeks in the past seven days we have seen that trend change fast many states are now trying to re re re, re like open Right. Even though not everyone is now going back to work, but people know that this will come soon in the next few weeks and months. And we should all try to prep for that. So in, in the past seven to 10 days, we've seen a very strong change in terms of people are now uh, very keen to hire. And many of these owners, teams, they are now trying to think about how can they plan and prep for that. So in the next seven to 10 days, I think that is that is very, very key. Um, and yes, we do see a huge growth in terms of people trying, trying for jobs. Um, I would say maybe there's like almost like a four to five X growth in terms of this average for every single jobs that we see out there. Uh, but one thing that is very, very key to that we see is that uh, being able to screen people, and finding people who are like a fit for a role, it is even more key because you, you, I mean, as an owner or someone who runs hiring, you really don't want to be spending your time talking to maybe 100 people every week, right? You really only have time to talk to like three to four people who you think are good and maybe choose to hire one to two, right? So that is why it's very key to try to practice some of this online screening through quizzes, videos, questions, so that you, you, you can really use like software and tech to try to find folks who are, who are fit for you to first talk to and then try to bring them on after. Got it, got it. So, you know, great explanation on that. And I think I think this one is delves a little bit deeper. And I know that we commented and you, you kind of shared about uh, targeting hourly workers. Anthony actually asked, is target audience solely only for hourly workers? 
And are, if so, or if not, are there any plans to scale and move to salary workers? Yeah. I, mean, I think that's important to, I think that'd be very interesting to talk about. Yeah, that is very, very great. Thank you so much for, you know, asking that. So, um, so we actually serve both hourly and, and also like, you know, full-time people who are paid salary. Uh, our main focus is really on people who is in this dashless space, people who are in this blue, 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 blue collar work. Right, so that is our main focus. People in this so-called higher churn, higher, higher need um, space. That is really what we are now focused on. Uh, we are not focused on if you are like a software startup, right? Or if you are, or if right. you are trying to hire software, software, software engineers, CFO. Um, like I'm saying, there is a ton of tools out there. Workday, um, you know, like Paleo. Slack, Zoom, build for people in this bigger office facing work. But if right. you look at this, I, I would think maybe the word to say it is actually deskless workers. If you if you look at the space for this actually of 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 this actually deskless workers, whether it is hourly or whether it's like full time salaried people, there's a huge gap in tools being built for them because they are always always on the go. So that is what we are trying to do here. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks, Anthony, for asking. So yeah, the questions are coming in. So um, it, we're opening up the box right now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so uh, Maggie actually asked, what type of changes, if any, do you think will be Im implemented into the hiring processes of many companies now post COVID-19? And uh, I actually, yeah. you know, uh, would love to hear your thought on that. And I have a personal uh, quick story about, about that. So go yeah. Ahead. <laughs> that is great. Uh, so, uh, so I think the big trend that I talked about was actually it is it, it, it is actually contactless hiring, and I still feel mm -hmm. strong about that. So that is something that I've already talked about that I think will be very key to put in. Um, the, the the second thing that I think I see uh, will be put into hiring processes. I think is. Um, coming back to the word trust, right? People really care about trust. Like, who can you trust, right? Many of the small, small business owners, everyone who you who you work with, it is like your this family, it is your crew, and that trust it is even more key now, right? Who do you bring into this actually, in 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 to this actually family? Because if you if you think about it, many of us are now at home with our parents, um, spouses, and kids because we trust them, right? So similarly, when you go to work, you must trust that um, someone who is coming into work, um, he didn't like go out to party or he didn't go out to go to go to or, or to go to the beach where he can run the risk of uh, bringing back something that is not safe, not just for him, but for his friends and his teammates who could be a bit older, right? Yeah. Uh, so... Um, trust is very key. And I think that is the word over and over that I think that every owner should think about, try to enforce very, very strict rules, right? Um, just like how for me now, my my wife, she's saying that you cannot go out for any kind of work stuff. And she trusts that I won't go, right? So similarly for your crew at work, uh, if you were to work, there should be certain guidelines to know that any of your peers and crews are not going to do anything silly so mm -hmm. yeah very 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 well man yeah, yeah. so then a quick story i mean i i uh uh about me so that i just started a new job in this covid 19 era so i have yet to set foot in my own <laughs> desk job office so it's been a very interesting uh experience thus far for me to basically you know start a brand new you know job really in the comforts of my own home and everything just shipped to me and everything's virtual so you know this is this is our i guess new norm new reality so so it's important i think for for everyone to to be ready for something like this so thank nice. you thanks for the explanation nice. yeah, nice. yeah. It's, it's weird i'll say <laughs> it's, 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 so. it's cool all right so um so i see I have a question from Min Park is how is Workstream helping businesses with their government loans on rehiring? That's a, that's a technical one. I, I'm not, I'm not yeah. too familiar. Can you, 
say that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the question from Min Park is, how is Workstream helping businesses with their government loans on rehiring? Yeah, that that is a really yeah, that is a very 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 good one because if you think about it, for most of this actually PPP loans, right? Seventy five percent of that have to go to payroll. That is a key, right? So let's say if you have borrowed 100K for the next two months, that means like every month you have about 50K, maybe about 35K you should be paying out to like to, to people who come and work for you. And that is the, that is the only way that you can not pay back the loan. <laughs> right? So if you don't, if you pay maybe half of it only to this payroll, you would have to, um, you would have to pay back some of that money to this actually company. Um, so that is something that we hear from quite a lot of our this actually current owners. Right now it is yeah. it, it is now May, right? So many folks uh, they are having to uh, they they probably get the loan in first of May and they have May and June to maybe try to spend this. Right. So which is why it is very key on how do you balance trust and speed? How do you hire people fast? So many of our current clients, they are now coming to us saying, hey, 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 Des, we really have to hire people fast because we, we really have to leverage this actually PPP loan. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very key for us to be trying to do, trying to do, trying to do that now. So that, that is something that we are now talking to them. So that's, yeah, that's, it, I mean, that that's a whole different world for me. So it's, it's definitely, it's, it's, uh, I'm sure we have more questions coming in. And so this one actually, it seems to be a follow-up from someone else, uh, Jimmy. And so it says, there's been a lot of questions about hiring concerns given the additional federal federal government uh, unemployment support. Minimum wage hourly workers may be earning more from, from employment than their prior salary. What are your recommendations to overcome these challenges? Yeah, yeah. That is a very, very, very good one. And I hear quite a bit too. I think... It really comes back to the point of like being partners, family, and trust. Crew mm -hmm. come to work for you. You you will have to share with them that um, this is something long term. Even if you can take a break for the next few weeks, um, it is not helpful because if you don't come back, I may go back to hire <laughs> someone else, and yeah. it will be hard for you to find a find a job. Then so you you yeah. you may get this free pay for the next three weeks or two months, uh, but then what, as things changes in the next few months, uh, it will be very hard for you. It will be very hard for your you know, um, family, right? So that is something that we do here, our clients trying to re, re like focus in on culture, team, and trust. all these things are things that, that can last, right? It, it, it is mm -hmm. for like a few weeks or for like a few months or for a few, for a few grants. It's about we are in this for this, longer term we are in it mm -hmm. um to build something as a team so got it got it well you know we have had a lot of questions that's getting pretty in depth um with what workstream does i kind of want to pivot real quickly to you know something a little bit, a little bit higher yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes let's try let's talk let's check. um so this comes from eric first it's more of a comment slash question so first off and uh, I know um, uh, someone also made a comment on the, the post on Facebook, but for congratulations on your first Series A. Thank you. So, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. That's a big deal. And I think it was 10 million, and uh, Joe Montana was part of the advisor. So, if you don't know what Joe Montana is, guys, make sure to Google it, look up who that is. Shame on you if you don't know. So, <laughs> um, first off, congrats on the f first Series A. Thank you. And that's Eric's congratulations. So he commented that being someone who's in the earliest stages of developing a new software platform, one month in pre MVP, what is your advice on getting seed funding? And what point would a company be ready to go towards a Series A? So you just finished Series A. <laughs> right, you're gonna help a you know you're gonna help another company out. So Eric asked, yeah. how what do you do? Yeah, yeah. So I have, I have quite a I have quite quite a bit to share on that i'm very glad to you know try to share more now and if there's any follow-up i i i yeah i can share share more so i would say that i will first start by saying c and a they are actually very very different um having been through both of that i will say c right um it is it is it is quite a bit based upon like you know the you know founding team market 
uh, and your whole vision. Uh, mm -hmm. And many times people raise seed when they don't even have any sales at all. Um, and for seed round, you can typically do something called actually rolling close. So you can get a check um, through something called a safe note. It is, it is just a note where you can raise money. Um, so truly safe note, you can raise funding and you can do it week one, week three, week seven, and week 12. So you can keep doing it rolling close. And you you can even change your pitch every single time, <laughs> which is fine, um, yeah. which is kind of funny. Uh, for my seat round, I was, I, I was very, I, I, I was very thankful. I was able to close it in like, Two and a half weeks, three weeks. So that 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 went very well. Um, and I was sharing to like even for my this Siran, I was very thankful to have the help of this like this so called this so called the, the this so called Asian mafias. <laughs> it was really great to get the check from actually from from this actually Eric Yuan from Zoom and from quite a few other really top folks in the space. Um, for Series A, I would say that it is very different in a sense that you are typically trying to look for one fund actually bigger funds who can write a check that is a bit bigger right that check can range from three to five or three to ten million right some 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 a's are very big but i think on this average a's range from five to 20 million right in that range so typically you're trying to look for a fund who can put in a check from three to ten million dollars um and the key thing for a is create FOMO. <laughs> so how do you pitch many people at once? Um, so um, so for my Series A, I actually, um, in a space of one, once again, in about three and a half weeks, I pitched about 60 funds in the whole value. So I was on this semi yeah. road and meeting every single fund. Um, and I got six offers after pitching 60 funds. Um, and the key for A is trying to get the first fund to say yes. Because once one fund say yes, everyone will say yes. <laughs> oh, okay. And then once yeah, you get not, not the yeah, and, then, yes, true. and then once you choose a fund uh, and move mm -hmm. things forward, and then um things will come in very, very fast, which is why because my my round it was it was quite hot, right? So many people came in, which is right. why I was actually able to get many more of these so-called famous folks to come in to 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 really come in to 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 this round. And perhaps I have one more fun thing to share is as I was out to pitch with this actually 50, 60 funds, I will, I will just share that here. I think the trend of um, founders going out to pitch has changed uh, in terms of people who, who maybe looks like me <laughs> because I think we, Eric again from Zoom has changed the game for us. <laughs> yeah. Because um, someone like me who don't sound like I'm from here, who don't seem like I'm, you know, seem like I'm like not from the US. I think Eric has really changed the game, leveled it for us in a sense like um, when I put Eric Yuan in the in in my Slack deck and coming up to like tell them, um, it was I I can see how they think change, right? I don't know whether you all know, but you know, uh, um, Zoom has almost like half of their software team base in this Asia, right? Mm -hmm. So when I came out to raise funding, I say, oh, I have some of my software team based in like Singapore, like like Asia, and then they all were like, really, can you do that? And then I say, Eric Yuan told me to do it. And then they all changed their tone in one second. Of course, you must do yeah. it. Eric says, no, you must do it. I just like, yeah. <laughs> for me, it was it's like, easy. it was so funny because when I said it, it was silly. But when I said Eric Yuan told me to do it, their tone changed in one moment. They were like, of course, you should build it in, in this Asia. That is the best way to do it because Eric says so, you should do it. And I'm like, that's so funny. <laughs> So, so what you're saying is anything I want to do, I just got to make sure I grab I grab a name to, to help me. To, I just need some sort of testimonial. Yeah, it is it is very funny. Yeah. People really, because I feel like in late, in this, today's world, it is so crowded and so like, noisy. People, want, yeah. like people want like, you know, proxy. People want proxy of yep. who they all can trust. So other than right. Eric, I have quite a few other folks I you know, I don't know, like I have quite, I have, I have quite a few other folks, like, like I said, who they so called, this is called 
this we call Asian ma mafias, and that was very helpful for me. Whether it is trying to pick for funding or whether it is maybe talk to clients, it really helped them to trust that there's some kind of like like proxy, some kind of brand. So even though yeah. even though many folks say that no, we must trust our own judgment, but is this human nature? Do you look for this yeah. proxy, which is something familiar? Yes. It's something familiar, you're comfortable with it, and, and it, it helps bridge the gap of what you're trying to say and what I'm trying to understand. And so having that definitely kind of uh, puts the nail nail in, right? So that's that's great. That's great. And someone actually beat me to the punch in the chat. It says, you are the H in AHN, so Asian Hustle Network. I'm pretty sure that that's the, uh, you're the <laughs> Asian Hustle Network. That's, Thank you. Uh, or the uh, the pitching to the sixty plus sixty funds. Just, you <laughs> Thank know, you. And then perhaps I can share one more fun. Yeah. Fun. Very fun fact about that was, um, in that same week when I was thinking about going out to raise funding, um, uh, I just got my second baby goal. <laughs> oh, congrats! So that crazy. So, so uh, my baby goal was about two days old and I got an email from this from this from this from this actually from this the Koya capital trying to ask yeah. hey Des, um, you should come out to meet us and I yeah. I talked to my wife saying hey should I go out to meet them because if I do my flow will start right and, right and then my wife was fresh on she said go <laughs> <laughs> and for the next three and a half weeks I didn't I only had my baby like three times because I was working seven days a week. And by the end of my second, by the end of my third week, I only had one single offer. And I, I, I remember I was just, I was just having lunch with, with my wife and I just broke down and I cried for one whole hour. And I just told my wife that I let you down. I let our newborn baby down. I let my team down because I haven't yet closed funding. I'm a, I, I, I'm a huge, Failure. So I cried for one hour. It was so it was so bad. <laughs> but then the day after, I just back up and I got on a pitch and I got five more offers. And then things, everything just like came in. So I, I really went like this and I came back up. Yeah. <laughs> so it was it was really crazy, crazy. <laughs> oh man, I, I uh, can only imagine your your roller coaster of emotions. But I'm sure down the road is going to be an even more incredible story to, to kind of pinpoint this time. So, you know, thanks for sharing that. So, um, so it looks like we have about maybe just under 20 minutes left. I want to make sure to, 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 again, be respectful of your time, but, and then we, we have a lot of, uh, you know, great activity right now. So a lot, you got uh, several uh, congratulations, obviously on, on the baby, your series A, you know, things are going right. So, um, and, and of course the support that your wife is saying, go, so that's, that's <laughs> fantastic, right? That's, that's a huge win too. Yeah. So. <laughs> Absolutely. So very cool. So I know that we were, you know, talking about, um, you know, the, the recent, you know, uh, funding that you just got. And I think there was a follow up question on that. Um, and so the follow up question is like, what are the key things you will expand in your business after successfully raising more money? Now that you've got it, what's next? Yeah, yeah. I think it's definitely to try to grow, right? That is the key. I'm going to hire like a few more key people, like, you know, head of sales, head of, head of, head of marketing, trying to hire more people, trying to grow. Those are some things that I'm now thinking of, trying to re, 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 re invest back into product, trying to build something that is more scalable, that can, that, 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 that can create more like, you know, like, more like impact and change to like people. Uh, okay, those are the two to things that I'm now planning to do. So, <laughs> fantastic. And so that was more, I think, a more general question. I think there's a, a question Eric followed up uh, uh, regarding the Series A as well. And I think this is more internal. It says follow up question for the earliest stage company What's your advice on equity share towards early employees or friends coming in to help build said software? Got <clears throat> what is your advice on yeah. equity share? So, yeah. typically, what is best is um, typically for this for each like you know company and team at, at least for us we will put we will put aside a pool of about five to ten 
percent of shares to give to some of these early early founding members. I think there is a ton of this like you know benchmarks online that we all that we all can find. But I found that uh, my so called rule of thumb is try 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 to give more to some of your early early so called founding members who you think can stay with you for a very long very long very long time right mm-hmm. so i know today in this in this valley it is very common to have a to this actually to have this actually four year vest with this actually one year cliff for shares mm-hmm. um so for those who who actually don't know what 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 this means it means just like if you have like five five percent shares you'll get 1.25 um, after you have worked for one whole year and then it will vest every month after um mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. i have for folks is think about giving a bit more shares but having this period to vest to be longer mm-hmm. right so for <laughs> our team we have a five-year vest with this two-year cliff and mm-hmm. that has worked very well for us just trying to give more shares but finding people who are more like more like aligned with us for this actually longer term so got it, got it. That, that's uh, very insightful. Um, and so, I mean, obviously we, we have calibers of folks that are asking a range of questions and that that's definitely very interesting. Um, you know, as Asian Hustle Network grows, we'll definitely, you know, would love to seek, seek more advice uh, from, from your experience. So it's very, very relevant. Thank you for, for sharing that. Um, I'd like to give attention to Sarah. Sarah actually sent a question uh, earlier. I think, um, you know, she, she mentioned that I work with startups in the tech space like Workstream. That are focused on raising C slash Series A. Do you think that the current environment has made it harder for business owners to raise? Any insights on how to remediate that? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I do think some kind of face to face is key to actually build trust. Uh, when I'm talking to other founders, owners, what they find is that going back to to funds who they have talked to in the past has been very helpful people who they have built some kind of friendship with for the past few years right if you think about trying trying to raise funding it is always a game that is actually longer term people think that oh when i'm out to raise funding in three weeks i can raise it like me perhaps but the truth is many of these people i have known for six months one year two years Mm -hmm. many folks i have known from the past they have seen how i work for the past few years Mm -hmm. so i would say that in this Today's climate, even more so, I would say like people are able to raise funding from people who they know from the past. That is one very key point. So try to keep your this actually older, older ties stronger. That is very, very key. That is the very first point I have. Uh, if you're someone who really have to raise funding, but you don't really have a good, you know, you know, network, uh, try to ask other people to introduce you. Right, some of your clients, some of your teammates, um, that could be very helpful. I think um, trying to meet face to face it is still key, but in today's climate, it is very hard to like to like do so. So if you can get some of your clients and friends to make that warm, that that warm intro, that can be very, 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 very helpful. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Very insightful. Sarah, hopefully that uh, gives you uh, more insight on your immediate question. If you have a follow up, feel free to drop that in the questions tab. Okay. Thanks for asking, Sarah. Uh, Okay. Um, So we have another question. So what are your thoughts on bootstrapping a company? (laughs) I think I would see a trend in the topic. What are your thoughts on bootstrapping a company at the beginning versus raising funds to grow quickly? That's a really, really, really good one. Uh, I'm a fan of the of the of the first one, uh, trying to actually boot strap first. Uh, for me, I have a very strong value of being frugal, and I think that being frugal it will cause you to be to be actually creative and to think how can you solve like you know you know problems. And the truth is, many things you can solve not with money. It is more of how do you think about things, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, when you have a team of if you have an idea and you raise one to two million dollars and you have a team of like five, 10 people, even with five to 10 people, you are quite slow because you cannot change things fast now. You have to talk to them, you have to sync one-on-one meetings. Even if you are in a same room, it is still very slow. It is the fastest one. It's just like two to three people in a room mm-hmm. being able to change ideas very quick. 
and you feel very light when you haven't raised funding because uh, you are able to pivot and test. And I have a ton of thoughts around this, which I would love, love to share, right? Um, what is your so-called MVP? This actually minimum viable product. Do you really have to spend money to build a software or to build, if you're running this food, 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 food business, do you really have to build like a shop or, or rent a place to, to try to test things out? Right. Probably not, because if you spend that money to rent a space or to build a software, it is, it is not just money, it is time. Six mm -hmm. months, 12 months have gone and your food goes live and people don't like your food, <laughs> right? Or right. people don't like your software. So this so-called lean, 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 like trying, lean, like pivoting, lean, lean, like startup, it is very helpful. Uh, right. If you have a product, have a simple learning page, do some ads, try things out. If you are trying to prep food, uh, cook something, sell it to your friends, neighbors, right? What is the so-called minimum viable like product that you can build to test mm -hmm. us and to move us? That is very key. It is. It is never about you know you know you know money. It is never about money. It's it's always about how do you solve a real pain point, right? How do you solve a real pain point that people really really want? Even if you think about this group, right? This this so-called A H N group. It grew so fast in the past few months because it hit a real need. It hit a real, real, a uh, real, a real gap. I think it was not about us trying to have a ton of ads or money trying to get people to, to join. It is not. It's because it hit a real gap and a real need. So I think that is always key. So, Absolutely. yeah, <laughs> super insightful. So I know yeah. you mentioned the word pivot earlier, and um, I, uh, this is actually a question that came in earlier. And I know, I know for us. Um, COVID-19 is, is partially why we're, we're talking today. Um, from you personally speaking, like how has COVID-19, this is a question from Sarah, how has COVID-19 changed priorities of Workstream? And have there been, or have there had to be any pivots made? What are some short long-term goals for the business because of this? Yeah, that's a really, really, really good one, Sarah. Thank you for that. So um, even prior to, to this, COVID, we had about half or more of, of like our team work from home. So after this, it was actually quite a quick switch for us to get to get all of our teammates to actually work from home. So on that front, we 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 we've been very lucky that that has gone very well for us. So in terms of our our focus on trying to serve clients, mm -hmm. uh, we, we do see a trend in terms of like you know. Uh, Clients in the space of, you know, in this healthcare supermarkets, they've been trying to hire much more. So mm -hmm. we we did try to put some more time into trying to serve those clients, right? But then again, the trend changes very fast, right? In the right. past few weeks, we see people trying to re re rehire and to re 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 reopen now, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we are now trying to help those help help those folks now. So I would say there's quite a few tr few trends that we see. So we are trying to you know, trying to pivot fast to try to serve their needs. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's, um, and, and I think this is a, a perfect time to, to follow up with a, a question that actually relates uh, to, to that. And because we're going through these changes. And so because you have the inflow of demand for companies, high, like they're hiring, do you see that happening more? Do you see more companies? Um, and, or do you see the inflow of supply of companies uh, or sorry, employees, employees, you see more companies coming in, more employees coming in. What's the like the ratio? Min's asking just because uh, his question originally was, have you seen inflow, demand of companies hiring, or an inflow supply of employees given the unemployment benefits? So I think that's a that's a pretty interesting one. Have you seen a, a major change in, in ratio of, of what, what you're hearing? Sorry, can you say that one more time? Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. yeah, so the question the question is, and let me just find that again. Let's see. One second. All right, let me find that question. This thing. Yeah. In park. Let's see. All right, so Jimmy, thank you. So it says, have you seen an inflow of demand for companies hiring or an inflow of supply of employees given unemployment benefits? Yeah. Um I I would say I see a a 
bit of both and the trend is changing fast. Like I say, I think in the past seven to 10 days, many of our current business owners are now trying to reopen and re and rehire and trying to prep for that. So that, that growth has been very strong. So I would say that the curve is going up fast almost in the past seven days. And I think that, that curve, it will only just go up even, even faster. Um, so yes and yes. So I think uh, we see many of our current owners are trying to hire fast. Uh, in terms of the second question on influx of people who um, are on this actually unemployment benefits, we hear some of that too, but still there are still many people trying for jobs, which is why I think the key is trying to screen through people and finding mm -hmm. folks who are, who are like a fit for your role. Got it. So. Got it. Got it. Well, it's, um, you know, we, you know, we, we've heard a lot of incredible things about not only, you know, your background, um, you know, what you're doing with Brookstream, what you think the future of the industry looks like, and just, you know, some tips on how we can kind of overcome and even series A, I learned a lot today. And I want to, uh, we have five minutes left on the webinar. And I really wanted to, to kind of let the audience kind of know about what does a day or what does your day today look like as an entrepreneur? <laughs> I think I think that's a I think that's a it seems like you do so many things, wear so many hats. What does your day to day look like? Um, it's a good question. Uh, I can quickly share. I so I would say that it's it is a lot of like um, so every 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 morning I will try to get up at about. 6 30 to 6 a.m in that range mm -hmm. and then i will go out for a run i will stretch and then i will i would actually go out for a run. so i really love sports and um i've been playing actually 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 basketball um <laughs> since since i was seven i was actually this actually i was the i was the main like you know you know i was this actually starting point guard for my this country singapore team oh, wow. <laughs> yeah so i've been playing since since i was seven um, so every morning I will be up and I'll go out for a run and I'll stretch. Um, I'll do that for about 45 like minutes and then I'll come back. I will have some food, breakfast, I'll shower. Then I'll, I will, I will do some emails and then I will typically have my first call about 8.45 or 9. And then, um, in the past few months, I really like to have like my first so-called, my first so-called, so-called, so-called meeting and call very early so that it will push me to be up early <laughs> and then after i do my first one to two call i will free up about 9 45 to 10 and i will try to spend one to two hours to clear up emails and then i will go for lunch um, and then for lunch i will take a very quick uh 10 to 15 minutes power nap <laughs> oh, yeah do that you gotta put that uh, that works very well for me and then i will brush my teeth <laughs> and I will <laughs> I will come back to work and um and then I'll work again a uh, mix of meetings calls and you know emails and checking stuff and then I um in the past two weeks I'm trying to do a quick stretch at about 5 30 to 5 45 p.m like a quick 20 minute stretch uh and maybe even go for like a short short run I mean, not run like a short play around with with my kids <laughs> <laughs> And I'll have dinner around 6.30 or so. Um, and then I will go for a walk at 7 around my, my house area. And I, 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 I've been trying really, really hard to not check email after 7 p.m. Really, really hard. No, um, that's a personal thing too. <laughs> yeah, so that has worked very well for me because I learned that when I check email or check online after 7, I cannot sleep until very late because my mind keeps spinning, right? So if I'm able to not check email by seven, I can get up by six a.m. But if I check email, I won't get up to like seven or ish. So, yeah. <laughs> got it. Got it. So, I mean, uh, and I'm sure that carries over to the weekends as well. Um, so the, these habits, these the schedules, so it's consistency. So that that's uh, definitely. So um, you know, as we wrap up, I, I want to give you a chance to to kind of talk to the to our audience. Um, what are some imparting or departing, you know, wisdom that you like to give, give to everyone during these times? Yeah. Um, I have a few. I think the first one, I have maybe three, three key points. First is to be, to be, to be open-minded. I think many great, many great founders, businesses, owners have actually created tons of stuff during changes, right? 
in 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 like life. So I think be very open to try something new. Second mm-hmm. is always talk to clients. Build something mm-hmm. people want. Build something people want. Whether it is a food product, it is a service, it is software. Build something that that people want. Do not fall in love with this with this idea of an app or of this product because you may love it. But if people don't want it, it is very hard to grow, mm-hmm. right? So build something people want and be very close to your clients. Talk to them, hear them, watch them, right? Um, and I think the lead is um, be happy and be thankful yeah. and just be safe. <laughs> very, very wise words. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's uh, something as uh, sometimes as simple as that 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 people tend to forget. So. You know, thanks for sharing that. So uh, thank you. So thanks again, uh, Desmond, for coming on today on Saturday and sharing your time with with the network. I know that there are uh, folks that uh, unfortunately couldn't make it, but you know, we we make, we're making sure that we recorded this so that we can put post this up on YouTube. Um, I know you're a guest writer for Entrepreneur uh, with one of your five keys. So we want to make sure we provide that link uh, as well uh, to go with the video so people can find out a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, about what your thoughts are and what they can do in today's environment. So thank you for that. And to the audience, make sure uh, we'll go ahead and post this video up at a later time. Um, and Desmond, I want to thank you. Uh, and is there any other way that people can find out more about you um, or, or get in touch um, or yeah, yeah, they can either like you know, you know, email me or maybe, maybe Facebook me. My email is Desmond at workstream.is. So feel free to you know, you know, email me straight, um, or even try to Facebook me. So either way is great. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Well, thanks again. Thanks for being part of Asian Hustle Network. Thanks for sharing your time. It's uh, it's great to have you know someone of your caliber to be able to to kind of share knowledge with others that have the same um, you know like journey. Uh, with you. So thank you so much. Awesome. Sounds great. Thank you. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks, Desmond. And everyone, thanks so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Okay. Take care, guys.